But I think one of my biggest things when I was young was, you know, something about college just fascinated me. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was that purpose that I had for, what, maybe 10 years of like, everything I'm doing is going towards getting to college. And In June 2019, I took to the road to ask people from all over the country about their dreams. I thought I would be learning about them, but I'm also learning about myself. Join me and see what you find out about yourself as you listen to other people answer the three dream questions. Are you ready, Chris? Yep. Okay, the first question is, what are your hopes and dreams? What, is, what are your aspirations what, for the future or for right now? So right now it's um, kind of hazy, and I think I think it's kind of to have hopes and dreams. Like I kind of want a purpose. I think um, you know when I was younger I kind of had like a desire to go to college, and then like that was a huge part of when I was young and you know did well in school, and then I got there. It was an awesome place, and then kind of became hazy after that, especially after my first job, and it's like. I kind of enjoyed life in my 20s a little bit, and um, I think now I'm at a point where I'm finding myself wanting like more of a purpose that that's like a, you know more of a life full purpose to keep me going in a direction. Because I'll find purpose in you know hobbies or things like that, and they'll keep me happy. But you know they usually last a couple years or a couple months. I'm, I'm going to put some words in your mouth and let's see if I'm wrong, you can correct me. Yeah. Uh, what I'm hearing is that maybe at some level you were kind of living other people's expectations. Yes, and then, actually. And now you're finding yourself saying, oh, you know, this is where I am. What am I going to do now that I'm here? Right, exactly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm an engineer and I enjoy it, but uh, I'm not super passionate about it. And I think I... I think it really was expectations of other people, especially my parents, you know, saying, you know, oh, that's a, a place where you get a job and do really well in, and you're, you're always good in school, um, and you'll make good money out of college. And I kind of, because of those expectations, instead of following something that interested me more, I followed that instead. I, I was a lot more interested in biology. Um, I actually almost did kinesiology in college. But I always loved chemistry too, so I ended up going chemical engineering. and. The parts I didn't like about it, I made sure I wanted to have some connection to it. So I got into biotechnology, which is a good enough connection to keep me happy enough. Um, and I got into the biotech field. So uh, I didn't do so bad, you know, still somewhat connected, but um, I definitely could have found something where I was a lot, like biology itself just fascinates me enough where I lose myself in it and I'm never bored. And I kind of wish I was doing that every day. Oh, very cool. I, I interviewed a kid and uh, a guy in Iowa who felt like he'd passed up a lot of opportunities to do something. He's only 35 or 36. I started doing my stuff when I was 40. And so, if I'm hearing right, your, your, one of your aspirations would be to find and be able to apply your passions to the yeah. rest of your life. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be career. Career is just you know what you spend most of your time doing. Um, and I I do that now with with hobbies, whether it's you know snowboarding or video games or even women, you know. Uh, but those things don't last forever either. And I kind of want something a little more more of a stable purpose in my life. But I'm also aware that. Uh, you know, passions and interests change over time, but uh, you know, a little more long term would be. So you've talked about some of the things that you wanted to do. Is it from a very early age? Do you remember some of your earliest? Yeah, although desires? you know, when I was really young, I never had something that was super desired. It's more like, oh, this would be nice, maybe this. I remember when I was super young, um, I really liked fiction and all that. So one of my interests was like, I kind of wanted to be a writer. Wow. Um, I also, for some reason, wanted to be an inventor, which I guess engineer is close enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also, a, I was huge into, you know, I loved animals, so I also thought about being a vet, which would have correlated great with 
um, what you do biology. Kind of bio, biotechnology. Of yeah. Time. Well, but uh, you know, none of them. I was super young when I was having those thoughts, and um, you know, you never really know. But I think one of my biggest things when I was young was, you know, something about college just fascinated me, mm -hmm. and that was that was that purpose that I had for what maybe ten years of like. Everything I'm doing is going towards getting to college, and then you got that now. What? Yeah, yeah. And but even just having that purpose, I, I did really well in school. I was sixth in my class, um, and I went to Penn State. And then when I was first there, it was, it was like amazing. It was like I made my goal that I've always had, and I was in heaven. I was, you know, really learned about myself and met, met good people. Um, but then, especially once college was over, and was after about a year after. Doing my first job, then I started really feeling that now what? Almost like a quarter life crisis. <laughs> like, yeah. well, this is life now? Yeah. Wow. I think a lot of people can identify with what you're feeling. And I think a lot of us are there still. And, and we're, it's not, and we're not even in our 30s. We might be in our 60s, 70s, or 80s, or, or, or younger. Yeah. Um, if you could go back and talk to that uh, adolescent, Chris. Or a group of adolescents right now. Is, do you have any advice or anything you would tell them, or tell yourself? Yeah, um, I think it relates to what we've been talking about. I, I really do think people should follow their interests more than what other people's expect of them. And I really felt that strongly enough where I kind of taught my sister that. My youngest sister. I'm actually closest to my youngest sister. She's about to be 21 this week, actually. Mm. Um, she's a senior at Penn State, um, and I noticed, you know, she's always done that. She's always done art, and now she's going into bio-related fields. But she's so happy, and she doesn't care what people think about her. And I think part of it was she had three older siblings who really, you know, showed her enough love where she didn't feel like she needed to please anyone. It sounds like the advice would be. Be aware of other people, but don't let them make your decisions for you. Is that kind of right? Yeah, yeah, along those lines, definitely. Find a place. For, I had one person say, "Find an adult that, that will guide you, you know, or, or will, in your interests." Especially if you're drawn to that person who you're learning from, rather than the other way around, where you're kind of someone's forcing it yeah. down on you. Does anything come up for you? Right now, no, I'm just kind of reminiscing throughout okay. my life right now. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a good thing.